Okay, so do you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. So hi and welcome. Uh, my name is Palasto Backman. I am a graphic designer based in Stockholm, Sweden, with roots from Iran. I'm also a member of Type Directors Club's advisory board. So today I have the privilege to moderate this conversation together with Golnar Khat Rahmani and Matthew Tapia. So Golnar is a Berlin-based creative director and artist. She was born and raised in Iran, graduated in visual communication from the Faculty of Fine Arts at Tehran University and the Academy of Arts Berlin Weissensi. She runs Studio Khat Rahmani and specializes in typography type design, editorial design, featuring a strong expertise in multilingual design with a focus on Persian Arabic typography. Her recent project, Type and Politics, aims at freeing Persian Arabic type from its ideological and negative connotations. Matthew is a self-taught artist and designer born and raised in Hawaii with more than 15 years of experience working in New York and Honolulu. Over the past decade and a half, he has honed his speciality in hand lettering for a diverse group of clients. His passion for art and hard work extends his capacity to a wide range of projects from costume type and lettering, identity design and art direction to illustration, mural installation and more. So we will start off with uh, Golnar and Matthew presenting their practices. And uh, after the visual presentations, we will have a chat together. So if anyone in the audience have questions, please write them in the Q&A. Also, um, Matthew, I know it's super early in the morning for you. 5 a.m. So we are extra thankful that you are here with us. Um, so with that, uh, Golnar, are you ready to start your presentation? Hi, sure. Um, I'm going to share my desktop first so we can start from scratch. Um, um, okay. I guess. It shows me that I'm not allowed to share my screen while the other participant is sharing. Oh. Maybe uh, Matthew, you're still sharing? No. No. Um, oh, yeah, now. Now it's starts. Okay, I can share. Yes, thank you, guys. Cool. Um, Thank you for having me here on the panel. Um, I start uh, and go very fast through some expressions of my words. And so we have much more time for our um, lovely discussion than late, late, later on. I run Studio Katrahmani since 2016 and there I practice mostly um, between the different cultures and um, for the um, multilingual design, typography, editorial design, also the font design, mostly from my expertise of, um, on the uh, Persian Arabic type, um, but through the layout together with the Latin and other scripts. Some uh, of the posters. Um, from the recent time is the uh, Namake Safar I made for the pop-up shop. I um, made up for the uh, fashion collection. I come later on it, back to it. Um, it was an event uh, in Akud, uh, Martinoy, the culture house in Berlin, and two weeks before uh, the first lockdown occurred. Um, and was presenting a fashion show and there in A0 format. This is, um, okay. 
Do you see my screen properly or just a bit? Okay. Um, and here is the poster of, um, I've been uh, asked for, for the 100th anniversary of the French Communist Party in France, should happened in December 2020, as you see on the poster. Uh, they've asked um, 100 artists from worldwide to participate in this um, event um, for uh, the, the motto of for the better future. And um, and if it happened because of the lockdowns, is it happened in the first of the May um, 2021 uh, in Paris and the streets. That was an amazing thing. We miss here in Berlin such an event. Um, the next is, as you see, um, the poster is in three languages. Um, Persian, English, and Japanese. I made the poster in 2019 for an art um, performance of an artist from Berlin. She was participating in Setuchi Triennale in Japan. So this uh, kind of letter, um, playing with the letters all over through these um, images that was um, for the very first time I tried to make some designs and typography with these uh, such different languages. Here is a poster for um, the uh, is, um, um, event also uh, from the Klang Tepish. It's an, a project, um, music project um, uh, institution. They try to uh, join the experimental Iranian music to the Germans exper experimental music also for the electronics the exercises different around um, amount of um, in different music scenes in Berlin yeah um, one of my very first um, actually the very first book I made uh, about um, with this uh, multilingual challenges um, and bio, bio terror, which goes about uh, the chemical uh, attacks uh, of the biological um, bombs um, during uh, the Iran Iraq uh, war uh, in the 80s and um, such a hard uh, content, but um, the um, interesting challenge were. Um, to put these Persian letters uh, beside the uh, Latin letters um, uh, or scripts. At the same time, the book starts from two sides, how I solved it, so the journey in, the, in between. Um, there were two copies of it in, for the exhibition and they both got stolen. So I don't have any solid copy of it. There are some expressions from the inside of this book. Um, and um, yeah, as you see, um, the, um, some pictures were in 3D at the time. That was a while ago, I made this. But here for some pages, I um, brought some memory um, spots. So they, uh, they were at the beginning and at the end of the book, um, some, um, Parts that we could see the both uh, scripts at the same time. Here is the uh, documentation um, cover, actually, front and the back side of it. Uh, for that um, performance happened in Japan. So uh, that was a, um, for the three days, it was continually um, happening, such things. And there were uh, different. These are some slides um, from inside of this book. The, uh, uh, the Persian and Japanese texts, same as the feet we had, and some blankets. Um, uh, these whole, um, I mean, it was about three or four meters long blankets for the people that were sitting on it and having, having um, those. Um, food mixtures, also the whole corporates that would come 
Um, there were been other uh, recipes, more than 13 recipes. But then here also, there was a big challenge to put these three languages uh, all in the same time. Also the details of the recipes in this book. This is another uh, documentation book, um, uh, Tehran Rasve Kala. It happened in 2000, between 2018 and 20, before the lockdowns occurred. Um, there was a symposium between Berlin and um, Tehran uh, uh, for the city ar architectures and the story of the both cities, which is there were a lot of similarities and a lot of workshops happened there. And um, yeah, that's the documentation of it, which there's uh, um, some expressions from the inside of the book. I also do a lot of typesettings, as you see here, for some brandings. But um, uh, this in Hebrew, um, Persian, or Arabic, and English. Uh, also, the moving types. It comes for the other project um, at, and the opening doors of the universities, um, like the opening tour. Here another um, book cover, um, also an amazing challenge to study uh, the Hebrew letters and uh, learning the alphabets and doing some um, graphics for this amazing book of Adi Ophir uh, for the Fortan University last year I made. I mean, it finished last year, it started two years ago. And um, yeah, I was very amazed of, um, having um, such experience because of the extensions, I tried to, to apply some of the um, possible, other possibilities uh, that the, uh, I know it from the Persian letterings or typography, I applied it into the Hebrew uh, letters. And um, yeah, uh, I was, uh, a nice project and I had a, a great feedback, so which is always surprising. Um, this is a, a amazing artwork of Henning uh, Wagenbreath um, in Berlin. Um, now, um, he lives in Berlin, but the artwork is in Netherlands, a huge wall uh, of a, a library, a library in Netherlands, and I uh, participate with this, uh, Type settings and letterings for the Arabic uh, wordings on this uh, artwork. Also, one of the typefaces I practice. Um, actually, this is for me. The other ones are for the uh, um, customers, the clients that ask. So I say with the Gilgamesh here. And um, another thing I do parallel to the studio Kazrah Money is type and politics which is an initiative project of mine started officially in 2018 and there i trying um 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 for the very first time um type and politics attempts and um, to open a discussion about the results of the uh, political and the ideological influences on Persian Arabic types, and um, which is mostly um, uh, comes through the media's these effects. So um, I, I, by that I trying to uh, each time I talk about uh, some issues, and uh, so where the issues are coming from and how it is all happening. Um, through the medias and what we see through the medias in our daily lives about this region, which um, this typeface or these letters are come from, and they are mostly scary treating said, so they're bombing us um, through the medias by such um, um, such negative um, pictures. Also, I'll talk about how the propaganda works and. Uh, what are the uh, results of them and how the politicians uh, react or uh, act for the um, 
for the purposes on those matters or about the terrorism, about all those um, keywords we're hearing about the wars and about uh, all those um, negative keywords related to the Middle East. And, um, and then I come to, of course, another big um, section, which is Orientalism, um, which also affects us by um, on these matters. Like uh, if we talk about uh, the Orientalism, the pictures coming to our minds and um, the differences between them and these are and the reality of what, for example, the women faces should uh, actually look like and then how um, they show us these things. And more than this, talking about the discrimination, why the discrimination of type is important and why uh, it shouldn't be and and the, um, the goal of the type of politics is to make much more as possible um, other um, visuals with these letters to um, demonstrate and to fight all these inputs with which are the false truths or the half of the truth and or in our daily lives we see. So instead, um, so the the goal is to um we have the instead of connecting those keywords or negativity or problematic things to Arabic type, we will see the Arabic type in completely new context or another aspects of these letters, like to uh, these types can be also cheer childish, playful, charming, exotic, and etc. To be very simple said, instead of saying this, I produce about um, a lot more of um, those looks to see and to get seen. And uh, for that, uh, giving talks and workshops and um, working with the students, also in different institutions and academies, and um, we bringing um, by making the new design so the people um, the participants will get to know how these letters work, so they get um, much closer to this uh, um, to this subject. And the making, for example, here the words is written on this tag is freedom and how they they can make a new uh, visuals out of it and bringing them out into the society so there wouldn't be any um, graphics stays in their computers for themselves for the who are only participants but uh, we use um, these um, opportunities to make kind of new media so so to demonstrate those old pictures out in the city. Um, yeah, continuing type of politics, I started as a very small label called GCAT Berlin. There I gather some of those um, circus screen prints I did with the Persian typography, like here it's written ha 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 um, of in Farsi and, and many other small conceptual artworks same as here, um, and the very late um, uh, decision we like um, making a fashion collection, which is um, our um, um, the thing we're wearing. So our outfits using our, the outfits as an element of communicating in this city. And there was this poster uh, I, I made for this last collection the collection um the graphics are about the dif the distances between the cities where the um persian arabic letters origined in mostly from the middle east and um the distances between there to berlin for example here it's written berlin tehran 4636 kilometers and etc so here berlin beirut damascus Baghdad, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the concept is much flexible and um, the people could 
asked and uh, about the distances, for example, some people ask me if, um, um, for example, from Isfahan to Tokyo and the distances, how they, these letters also make Korean to other part of the world. Um, and yes, lately I have a um, web shop finally, um, the, the stops are there available for anyone to achieve. And um, continuing type and politics with the pur purpose uh, of um, uh, doing thing against um, um, those negative political matters that, uh, as you all know, it's happening and since September in Iran, a big movement which goes to, it has been gone to a revolution. And for, for that, I also made some graphics and to support it. Um, and I brought some elements first, in very small numbers, and then the people asked a lot. So it's happened a change to a really big um, production of those badges in support of the people. Then in Iran, also many outfits out of the different contexts happened. Um, they're about the woman life freedom and um, posters, many posters are made in between. And um, also in November, um, while we, um, while many people were just get, um, got to the uh, prisons and there were really less um, media coverage at it uh, should be as it should be. So I started to make posters and uh, just fostering the city in Berlin uh, to get the attentions and to support these people. Um, and this is one of the recent ones the, um, to the uh, hundredth, uh, hundredth uh, days of memorial of, um, that this revolution this time started and the names of the victims, which were after 100 days only, there were uh, over 400 people, the mostly under 13 years old. And um, yeah, that was a sad work, but um, I should make it. So that was my part. And yes, we continue. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Uh, uh, yeah, I have questions, of course, but I will save them. <laughs> so, um, Matthew, are you ready for your presentation? And also, you're muted. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Um... Up. Is that showing up? Am I still muted? Yes. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, my name is Matthew. Um, I'm a designer. I live and work in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, I've been a freelancer for roughly the last 15 years. Um, yeah uh i don't i don't have much to show and i'm kind of blown away by what Goma shows i have a lot of interest in, in everything she was sharing and the way it relates to graphics um mine is much more surface um it's it's a bit lighter but um i'll just kind of walk through it um one of the biggest projects that i've been a part of to date um, was finished a couple of years ago and it was for the rebranding of the baseball team, the Cleveland Indians to the Cleveland Guardians. Um, this is after a number of years of the Indians being viewed as a politically charged name, for better or for worse. Um, a lot of different people have different stances on it. Our task was to go into the project without a prescriptive narrative 
and to develop a new name and branding for the team that was fitting for an MLB team. Um, and although new, somehow felt rooted in the history of the team. Cleveland's one of the oldest teams in Major League Baseball. It's one of the oldest teams in the American League. And that was part of the project. Um, I don't really, we haven't built a proper case study for this yet. So unfortunately, I, what I can show is gonna be very much what you can see if you were to turn on your TV, but um, there's a little bit of, of the back end here. Um, the, the impetus for the, the name Guardians comes from <clears throat> the statues that sit right outside uh, the stadium. Um, they're called the Guardians of Traffic and they're done in an art deco style. So we took a lot of visual cue from that um, in the shape of the letters and the shape of the joints and just in the general stance of most of the graphic sensibilities. Um, the, the type of art deco that the statues embody is, is slightly different than, than the Great Gatsby or something like that. It's, it's a little bit more stiff. It's a little bit more structural. And we, we drew a lot from that. Um, the script, again, is, is very similar um, in build. and. So is the illustrated ball. The team was large. I was just one person on it. I was responsible for a large portion of the lettering and the graphics, but I did not uh, develop the illustration side, which this, this falls under. Um, I was a part of the work, but I did not develop it myself. And so I can't really claim credit for that. Um, I did work with a designer to develop this typeface for the team as well. And although the letters don't get used on the names, the numbers do. You can see that on the jerseys. We also worked with the team to develop an um, arch that would carry every name in the same shape. Um, an example of different length names over numbers um, and just a couple of images. Again, um, what I can share from what we developed is still in question. So I, I wanted to share this because I am very proud of the work, just not quite there to sharing sketches, developmental work and the, the walk through on the thinking unfortunately. Um, but uh, as Prosser said, um, I self-taught. I got my start um, here in Hawaii doing lettering for t-shirts and whatnot. Um, but one of the other big projects that I was a part of was this pool lettering. And this is a pool at a hotel here in Hawaii that was renovated a few years back. Um, you can see down on the bottom right, the original pool it was drained prior to my work there. And um, this was a very hands-on project. Uh, the lettering followed this kind of shifted uh, uh, dot matrix style um, tiling. And I painted it because that was all the budget could cover. And um, this shot was taken during the day. This is one of the very few weekends that I was able to work on it, but because construction on the hotel was going on during this project, I actually worked at night, almost every night for two months, um, overnight uh, with just lights and paint. And it was really, really grueling, prepping paint to sit underneath um, tons of water, because that's how much water is in a pool is very, very difficult. Um, paint doesn't want to stick underneath that much liquid. And it was a very, very long and arduous process. But um, the results were really great. Um, this is a photo of the painted pool. Since then, um, the pool was, the pool area was closed. And uh, I got to work with uh, a tile installer to actually have this installed in tile 
So now if you were to go to the to the hotel, it's actually in tile. Um, we chose a special textured tile for the white of the letters. Um, I really don't know that anybody can feel it, but that was the intent was that if you're in the pool walking around, you can actually tell when you're standing on the words and when you're not. Um, just somewhat tactile aspect to this installation. Um, but true to kind of my roots, I started in t-shirts. I, I don't really work on t-shirts very often anymore, but um, just sharing kind of the more crazy lettering stuff that I've done. These are all t-shirts for various brands, um, friends, uh, projects that I've done over the years. Um, they follow styles and streetwear and surf culture. Nothing really, there's no real through line through it. It's just more illustration than anything else. But I do enjoy bringing that sensibility to the lettering and design work that I do. Um, I spend quite a bit of time illustrating. But I should, I should say I spent quite a bit of time illustrating throughout my career. I don't as much now, but looking back on this, I was very fond of this time. And so now that's that's why you're getting to see it because it was something that it kind of made me long for that that simple start to, to my career. Um, I've also done some skateboard designs. This was one I'm especially proud of. This is quite old. I think this project was done maybe five or six years ago, but it was really, really great, really fun to try and recreate the aesthetic for, um, for skateboards of uh, VHS tapes that I grew up with. Um, uh, something else I do, I, I do mural installations. Um, this is one that I did in 2019, 2019. Um, I'm doing another one, I think in two weeks, but uh, there's a there's an event here in Hawaii called well it was called Pow Wow Hawaii but they have also changed their name for culture sensitivity reasons um, they're now called Worldwide Walls and um, I've been fortunate enough to be invited most years since its inception to to paint a wall this is one that I did that I'm very proud of um, you can see some of the sketch work that I go through just to concept it out. I mean, it's a flat wall. It's much easier than most rounding work. You know, you just design what you want and paint it. Um, I've done some work with um, tactile applications. The only good vibes on the left was handmade. Um, I, I cut that myself, sanded it. Um, it's, it's just in plywood. I think it's about an inch and a half thick. Um, the copper I did not do myself, but I worked with a um, metal artist to, to, to make sure that that came out. And I'm really stoked on how these both turned out. Um, I've also done some edit, um, editorial illustration in the past. These are just a couple of covers that I've done for a magazine here in Hawaii. They're both uh, from the same publishing house, uh, Honolulu Magazine and Hawaii Business, Best Places to Work, um, that's of Honolulu. Um, and then some other magazine work, just fancy lettering, nothing very prescriptive about it. And then just personal lettering that I did at some point. Um, what's the best could happen? I, I think that often still haven't tried to re-letter this since it's initial, but positive messages and lettering. These, these are feeling dated to me now, but yeah, that, that's it. Um, not not all that much, but <laughs> stoked to share it. Hey, thank you so much. Um, and I think it was a lot. <laughs> so, um, okay, so now that we have greater insight into your practices. So let's start our conversation. Uh, so my first question goes to, um, to you, Golnar. Um, so I believe that everything is more or less political. Um, even when we 
don't really take a stand or claim that our work is political, but um, you are more openly political in your work. Uh, and you mentioned some of that uh, in your presentation. But so how would you say that you use politics in your practice as a method or way of communicating? Um, thank you for this good question, because I also am trying as much as I can in, in the workshops, same as any uh, conversation I come to, um, to put in stress on it and telling the people mostly here, at least in the Western Europe, European countries or um, same uh, level countries, that um, that almost everything we do is political and uh, has a political decisions. Uh, what I do and um, I practice are a bit more than what generally the people are um, involved with. But um, yeah, but it comes from other backgrounds I had because of the story of my family and the interest or the. Um, to be Iranian generally, you have to be much more involved with anything related to politics. And um, also many, I can um, imagine other countries uh, like Iran that had, they have much more issues in their daily life. So you getting into the subjects, but to me, because of my backgrounds, uh, I'm also interested in the social and political issues. Um, discussions and solvings or do even a small thing for it, I take a chance to be participate and do um, um, what I can uh, do, do it. But generally I, I believe everything is um, political in our lives because even not to be a political is a political decision. And um, even for the people, I mean, the new generations here in um, Western Europe, um, they see uh, they are a bit far from it. And as soon as the, um, it comes to, um, for example, in the field of art and the design, if you come with a um, with the name of a political titling to any subjects, they have a god. Or nowadays it's a bit better because then lately it happens a lot of right wings that they or right parties they're trying to get over the power so they much more people are now interested in because they see they have to be even in this um, radical political um, uh, teams or subjects active but all if the if you just put the meat away from your food is also a political decision so it's goes to very, very small part of our lives. And uh, I believe that it's important to be nowadays much more aware of it, that um, to talk about it easier, to bring it easily to many other aspects of the lives. And, and that makes us much more active and um, as much as the people are interested in the Futures and then in their decisions and then in this for the society decisions, we will have much more hopes for the future, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I, I thank you so much for that uh, answer. And I, I do agree. It's also, I guess, a way of being clear with what you, uh, what you are communicating and why. No, I mean, uh, as you said, being like neutral, I mean, that's also a deci decision that you need to understand that, that it is. Um, so, um, Matthew, do you, do you have any thoughts on that question? Um, I think Bulmer kind of hit it on the head as, as far as I'm concerned. I think that not everything necessarily needs to be, you know, big P political, but just the nature of the word, it's not, it's not the way that people see it today. People see it as only relating to political endeavors, um, causes and efforts, but 
I mean, the root of it is just about people, about how society relates to itself. And in that way, exactly what Bonner said, it's, it's political just to make a decision to walk out your door every day or to stay home because either one is how you're relating to everyone else around you. And that's all politics is. It's how you relate to everyone else around you. Um, to take such, such a stance in her expression of it, I think is like incredibly strong, like mad fucking strong. Sorry. I, I don't know if I can swear. <laughs> I, it just slips out sometimes. Um, yeah, I think that's amazing though. And, um, like that was one of the things I found myself thinking over and over again as she was sharing her work. It's just like the incredible strength to like put what you believe out there. I don't know that I have that, you know, um, uh, here in Hawaii, I think that most people tend to view politics in that way. It's, it's big B politics. Nothing else is, you know, like how you relate to the person down the street, like, you know, what they spend money on here. Like that's all something else. Everybody just thinks that they can get by without it. But um, I think it's starting to permeate more here too. You know, it's it's a very island culture. Um, aloha and love is a big deal. But I think that it's it's starting to even touch people here in Hawaii. Yeah. I don't know if I if I answered the question. I think I got lost in my thoughts there. No, you definitely did. So I have a question formulated uh, to you also, Matthew. And I also see that there's a few questions in the Q and A. But I'll I'll just uh, do this <clears throat> first, and then we can move on to the Q and A. Um. So yeah, you mentioned, uh, and also I mentioned in the introduction that you are self-taught. Um, is, is that something you can develop a bit further? Because I think it's quite an important and interesting addition to what we are used to in these types of settings. And with that, I mean that usually it's university educated designers who mm. talk about their practices. And mm. uh, so, yeah, in that sense, I'm, I'm interested in hearing you um, develop that a bit further. How did it start? And where did how did you end up here? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, sorry, my, my son's getting up. <laughs> um uh how did it start? Uh, I mean, I, I'm a high school dropout. Um I, I didn't finish high school, I never went to college. Um I've always drawn and I was just very, very fortunate. Um, you know. Uh, someone that owned a, a pretty large brand in New York happened to be here checking on his sales um, at, at some of the big box stores here in Hawaii. And I had a couple of art pieces up in a store that was right next to where he was having his meetings. And he walked in, he met with me the next day. And that was kind of the start of my career. I didn't have one before that. I was a security guard. I worked at a retail shop. Um, yeah, uh, I didn't expect what I do now to be my career. So I'm incredibly thankful that it is, you know, because it's, it's what I would be doing anyways, but it mm -hmm. just would not look anything like this, if not for those chance moments, you know, one, uh, of being kind of brought into my career. Um, yeah, I, I guess I also feel like there's there's a bit of imposter syndrome like that I feel like I go through on a consistent basis because I I would always I say quite often that I don't know how to do things um, even just sharing my practice I'm not really sure what that means I don't know that I have one um, I I can talk about the way I think about my work but showing people the way I think about my work has never been something I've I would say I don't even attempt it. This right here, I don't know if I don't know who I'm talking to, but this right here is the third time in my life that I've even presented my work to more than the company I'm going to be working with. The company I'm going to be working with is the only people that I presented. I've had one job ever in graphic design, and that was that first job where the guy hired me and brought me to New York. 
Yeah. Um, I left there. I left New York, came back to Hawaii, and I've been a freelancer ever since. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like um, I feel like I'm constantly trying to figure things out, but I don't I don't think that's much different than everyone else. It's just I got to trying to figure things out on a different path. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that did I answer the question. Yeah, you definitely did. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. My brain, it my wasn't. brain does feel rather scrambled. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, I apologize um, for that. No, thank you so much, uh, Matthew. So, uh, I have a few other questions, but uh, I'll I'm looking in the Q and A chat here, and I um, so Silo is asking you Matthew did you create a magazine cover on your slide on the far right with a uh, real sand um oh the sand one no um the project came because i had done a few uh sand sculptures of lettering um just on my own time um and it caught the attention in the magazine and I actually in order to have that last long enough to take photos and to just to meet the needs of a photo shoot right because you know you, you have changing light you have cloud cover it could have rained at any point in time it didn't but it could have so to, to go into it expecting to just build it in sand and it's going to somehow turn out right would have just been folly so I built it in wood I covered it in sand and then we brought it out and I actually had to do quite a bit of work prepping the base and then forming the sand up into the sand covered wood to make it look as though it was all there. Mm -hmm. I, I cut that's that's another one that I cut myself out of wood. So no, not not sand, not that one. Okay. Thank you. So um, Kamal is asking uh, you, Golnar, do you think Perso-Arabic script has negative implications in the countries where it is natively used? Also a nice question. Um, there are actually no, now that uh, like as we have it here, I mean, with here, I mean, in the North American, Canada or the West European, uh, countries um because i have i have an uh, other example which is the positive way of um politically affecting the scripts and letters is we know all about the latin letters which if you're in japan in china in the, um or in other countries also in the middle east where you don't use this uh, latin um Latin letters as a uh, as a native language, um, you have always a very positive impact of this. But it doesn't mean, I mean, on anything, on any label, if you put the Latin and uh, letters, you can sell it maybe double or three times more easily. It's all because of all those uh, political uh, working at the background that happens during the decades, of course, and the. Um, but it doesn't mean that they don't appreciate their own um, letters or their own, um, or they they have maybe some issues with this same issues as I con considered or talking by type and politics. Um, even I I can talk about Iran because I grew up there and I know the culture, at least there in Iran, there are institutions, which they, um, it's a very uh, uh, beloved institution of uh, practicing calligraphy for everyone. Mm -hmm. So there are, um, in the Iranian cultures, it's uh, very worthy, maybe um, like later, uh, um, at the late the times in in the Europe as well, so older times it was like um to practice to to write beautifully in the uh, with the letters and practicing these calligraphical skills. 
So the people are sending their kids or their teenagers even going to this kind of practicing schools and learning how to calligraphically write um, nicely. So I don't believe that it would come to these kind of matters, maybe other issues that I didn't uh, work with, but not this one. This comes mostly because of lack of the knowledge and for the countries which affecting these political um, propagandas, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, I also have a question uh, to you, Golnar. In the um, in the book Arabic Typography, the author Huda Abi Fares, who actually was present here in the audience, but he left. <laughs> so, yeah, but in 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 the book, um, he writes uh, in a simplified summary that in order for Persian Arabic typography to be developed and modernized. We cannot only look at history and copy, but develop and reinterpret so that it has space in a contemporary and future context. And that's something I think about a lot. Um, so how do you approach that in your work? Um, same, how do I live here? I do that. Um, actually, I'm not, um, uh, there are, two ways, I mean, two things I want to talk about as you uh, asking this. One is how I work with it. So I am so I read and practice this history a lot at school or at graphic schools and also to the researchers I done, I've done earlier, but um, I do live in a society which is a um, big cultural mix uh, society here in Berlin so it's not only the German society but um, and since a while um, I don't uh, consider myself as an only Iranian so I'm also something in between uh, and I get many inputs from different cultures here so what I make and uh, I believe so I'm not so much afraid of those stresses because what I do um, it's gonna comes out of these all inputs I have here. Then it's not from one side. It's so um so it would be in any ways a mix of some uh, re um, some our, our daily lives and and the taste of now or the need of now or maybe the future or what I think. But um, as I'm working with with these letters or the Persian Arabic types. It, they also gonna be part of this all um, design matter. So they would present themselves or the typographical way I use them. It should suit uh, other letters that I use in my artworks. Mm -hmm. And at the and another answer to it is um, recently, I mean, in the last two, three, de two decades at least, in Iran and many other uh, countries in the Middle East, the people, um, the students, and the designers are using much, much different ways and very modern ways of um, yeah. of approaching the um, the skills from the backgrounds and the historical um, um, skills they had through the history of. Uh, designs from those um, regions and they bring it to the very new um, visuals. And uh, I guess nowadays because of um, uh, the social media, we all has access have access to these new looks and this kind of things happening a lot recently. Um, and I'm very happy to see, I guess, uh, uh, Hoda Bifaris uh, wrote these books quite a while ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nowadays, uh, she's also much updated. She was recently in Berlin and had another um, exhibition here and um, about the women in graphic design from the Middle East. Mm. So, um, the goal with game. Yeah. So, has been. Okay, thank you. Uh, for that. So I'm moving back to the Q&A here. Um, Todd is um, 
saying brilliant work everyone what gives you purpose in your work we have to work to live uh, unfortunately <laughs> but what moves you along Matthew would you like to answer that what moves you along um shoot I don't know um I mean, it, it seems like the, the continent itself is pretty insightful. You know, we need to to work to live. Um, I've always I've always felt like I wanted to try and do something special in design. Um, I still feel really lucky to just be a part of it. Um, I don't know that I ever will do something special, um, something different, something that maybe hasn't been done. Um, I do know that I'll do it in the way that I do it, you know? But that idea, that idea of trying to, trying to reach something, um, something that is difficult and something that uh, it takes focus like that I guess that's that's what drives me um I'm sorry I, I feel like I feel like the question has put me into a more contemplative mode than anything else um I I, I want to answer longer but I'm not really sure if if it I, I have two sons um I, I had my first son when I was 20 years old I'm 43 now um my sons are adults my sons are both in college um and I'm at the age now where they're both in college and I actually have the ability to put the type of energy into my career that a 20 year old puts into their career. Mm -hmm. um, because um, as, as I said earlier, I was 25 when, when um, Seth, the, the guy who found me, when he pulled me from Hawaii and, and gave me a job, I was 25 and I had kids. And that was part of what brought me back here to just be a freelancer. And so now I feel like I'm, I'm able to just kind of chase down doing something different and special. I feel like I'm a little bit old, but, um, you know, it doesn't, I think that I'm in a unique position to kind of use that, that focus and that energy at the age I am now to, to try and achieve something. I mean, that's what, that's what drives me. I don't know if that's a good enough answer, but yeah, to try and do something unique. Yeah. Hey, okay, thank you. Uh, Golnar, do you want to answer uh, that? In my work, um, so related to my works, um, um, the very important thing is to have the feeling to, to be participating in social and in, in, in social projects so I can be a small part of uh, the project so they um to uh, bring or helping them to come out and maybe it's a chance to make a little improvement into the, for the society yeah. no matter in which way at least as long as I in the same opinion with them and I believe that it's a, for the good things or for the good um uh, future is uh, I do my part or um, there, there are sometimes that I working really for really less money sometimes I take no money sometimes I'm uh, lucky and I, I can receive a bit of money so it's not about the uh, fees that I take from it or for this uh, achievements but um, that's why the, the projects I received are really interesting. I'm really happy each time that one of those uh, small groups um, reaching out and asking me for uh, some graphic helps, which is um, not that important as the content is, but I use my skills to bring them or help them to get seen and, and to come further with the goals. And that's what I enjoy through the graphic design and yeah same 
were like for this all Iran revolutions. I don't believe that I had an, any influence on those all of things because I'm out of Iran and I can't, I mean, I can't have an influence on it, but um, yeah. this is um, the thing that, uh, how he explained that it moved me along. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it, bye. Okay, so I think we might need to round off, but I have a last question, uh, and that that one is to uh, both of you. So, um, how do you see type and graphic design in a future context? What uh, what do you wish for, locally and and globally? Um, may I start? <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Um, as um, um, as we all know, lately the world is much smaller than uh, earlier times, as because of uh, all these um, possibilities we have through the different social medias and media in general. We are much more connected and much more easier to reach. So the boundaries are almost fell out. As now we're sitting here all from different part of the world and can see and talk with, um, with uh, each other. Um, the same happens um, um, to the languages, to the cultures. And these all, uh, intercultural matters that or projects or, uh, or exchanges happening. I believe that we have to put or we have to have a chance to put more stress on types because the same as we put um, value uh, for about the languages to learn or about the understanding for the languages or not discriminating the languages and the people and every so on, same as by type and politics, I put a stress again on it that the type is a cultural good and it is a part of the language and a huge part of the culture. So if somebody use a letter um, or a letter getting discriminated, so the opinion at the back side, uh, behind of it, and the people behind of it, and the culture, and the literature, and etc., all getting discriminated. To me, it's important that the uh, close future, or maybe now it's also late, um, that the types from other uh, cultures, and the all non-Latin um, letters, gonna get they gonna get their chances and the values they. Um, they have to have and they um, they should get appreciated as they are the same as the languages and the people and the cultures with them and to get more uh, to come more out and to get more discussed on them and about the possibilities of them and uh, all these um, uh, issues we have to we have these challenges to apply these kind of letters um, same, they had to have the same value and equality this, um, on the design scene in the schools, in the universities, or for the conferences, etc., etc. all in the technical parts and so on for the whole other um, alphabets and the scripts. Thank you. <laughs> I was muted, sorry. Brilliant, thank you, Golnar. Uh, Matthew, what are your thoughts yeah. on that? I I don't think I could add much to what Golnar says. So from, from a top-down perspective, I think I agree with everything she said. I think that there, there definitely is so much expansion available and necessary for other character sets, other language sets. Um, just so that I'm not I'm not bumping the same thing. I mean, I, I'm excited to see just development period. I mean, 
the types of treatments, the types of interpretations of lettering, especially as technology evolves so quickly, um, as tastes move forward, um, it's it's incredible that this thing that basically just allows us to communicate an idea um, is just as diverse as it is. I, I'm 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 excited to see how much more diverse it could be, um, mm -hmm. and that inclusion aspect I think is is key. Um, you know, in the same way that like we use we use language to be precise, um, I think that including all the rest, like Bonar said, is it's not all about just lack of alphabet. Like there's mm -hmm. an inclusion that that allows us to be more precise across more uh, more fields. Yeah, I guess the more different expressions and languages, the richer the visual landscape will become. No? Well put. <laughs> Very well put. Um, mm, okay. Um, Golnar and Matthew, thanks so much for this. I could uh, sit here uh, and, and chat with you for hours, but um, I guess the time is out. And so thank you so much. And thanks so much for the uh, to the audience. And thanks for all the questions. And yeah. All three of us are on Instagram. So if anyone needs to yeah, contact us, feel free. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks.